Hello, good morning, and welcome to the Hoof GP. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Today is a busy one. Here's what's coming up today on this episode of the Hoof GP. I fix a childish problem. This cow milks from the wrong end. Craig hitches a lift, and I attempt to sing. <laughs> So today really, really is a busy one. Because I'm such a child, I need to deliver the car to the garage to fix something that I broke deliberately, which is a bit weird. We've got two farms and I'm gonna be learning to sing. It is quite annoying, isn't it? These guys are going to school, aren't you? Yep. Say hello. Hello. Campbell's just getting over an episode of tears. <laughs> and actually, is just about to do her hair. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got a surprise personality on the channel. I love you guys. Bye. Love you. So it's actually half past seven right now, but as you can see, it's still fairly dark here in Southwest Scotland. Our winters become really short. It gets light at 9 a.m. and gets dark about half two to three o'clock in the afternoon. Right, this is the problem. This is my BMW M4, and because I'm a child, I did this to it. You see, it's a bit loud, and it's actually too loud to drive. So the first order of today is to take it to the garage to drop it off to get that fixed, i.e. to put it back how it was. <laughs> I do love it, and this video is about hoof trimming. It's just, I'm taking this to the garage on my way to hoof trimming this morning, and the boys will meet me there. Oh, I just gave the game away a little bit, didn't I? Hmm. And just like that, we're back in the pickup. The car has been dropped off, and look who has returned! The personality. Morning. Kev Boy is back. That's right, we did actually sack him, fire him, shoot him, whatever. We got rid of him, but then we felt sorry for him and brought him back. Wasn't that good, Craig? I've missed him. Weird he didn't miss you. Anyway, we've got two farms to do today. They're both regular farms, and one of them actually might have a very sad story to tell when it comes to you guys. The second farm we're at is home to cow 2500, and things really aren't going so well for 2500. Anyway, we probably got around 70 cows to trim today, so we best get cracking. This is Whithorn, by the way, birthplace of Christianity here in the UK, which is a bit mad because it's such a small place. This is where St Ninian came for the very first time and actually lived in a cave on the beach for a little while before he upgraded to a bungalow. All the girlies having their breakfast. tight like a tiger, isn't it? So that's right, Kevin is back and clearly we didn't sack, fire, shoot, make him depart or anything like that. Kevin has actually hurt his back, which is partly why he left his last vocation, milking cows. But unfortunately, he may be left a little bit too late, so his back is seriously problematic. He's got a prolapse disc. And no, I'm not making him work. He can be off anytime he wants and has been off for the last good few weeks but don't worry he's still on full pay but like I said he doesn't need to be here but we're glad he is because it, it's good to get him out of the house it's just time for me to get changed like that and now waiting some cows because there ain't any there are an army of females beautiful girlies ladies if you like producing milk for our benefit all over the world and it is up to us to make sure those girlies ladies women females are completely looked after to the absolute best of our abilities. And I'm really proud to say 
the vast, 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 vast majority of them are really well looked after, especially at this farm. Watch your head there. And just like that, we've got them all in. There's about 35 here, so there's actually less than usual. The vast majority of these have nothing wrong with them. They just need a little tickle with the grinder. But cow 63, 44, which is, who is right at the back up there, is definitely lame. I spotted her on the way in, so we're going to get all of these girlies trimmed up, and then we'll take a look at cow 63, 44. You got me tiptoeing around you like you made a glass. Got an invincible fence, letting everyone know not to trespass. But you're bound to break down, bound to lose, bound to get knocked right out of your boots when I use my witchcraft. Right, so we just trimmed about 30 cows and went pretty much without issue apart from having to wrap one with dermatitis. And I thought I'd quickly show you why it is and how it is we're able to trim these cows so quickly and efficiently and easily. And it's actually not really down to us. It's down to the KVK, the crush, that green thing there. You see, there's a few little quirks that we didn't know when we first started. You see, this foot here is floating and that is no use. You try to trim it and it's just gonna flop out of the way. It took us a while to realize that if you lift the cow, the foot goes down onto that paddle nice and firm and if you lift it even more, it sits even better. So if you come to the side there, you can see the height difference. That's massively important. But also when you go to trim the inside claw, it took us a while to realize that if you augment or move the flap around a little bit, you can actually raise the inside claw independently. Look, you see, it's higher now. Yes, this one is sitting down there, but if you want to raise this one, then it's nice and tight against that. And obviously you're not trying to trim this one. So it's not sitting nicely, but you can trim it completely independently without even touching the outside claw. Happy, eh? Another thing that took us ages to figure out was, if it's like this, the foot can move around. And when you trim like this, it's floppy. And as we all know, when it's floppy, it's no use. All you do is you move this little flap backwards and now look, barely any movement at all. Working with the crush like this is massively helpful. It's nice and comfortable for the cow. Look, she's totally chilled out, aren't you love? Yep, chilled out. But also because all four feet are in the air, we can access them really easily and get on with the job nice and quickly. These back feet, so on the Appleton, we struggle quite a lot because the back feet sit exactly like this, exactly like this. So you kind of need the crush to lift up higher, which the Appleton does, by the way, but you're still kind of trimming down here. With this, lift the flap, extend it, beautiful. And again, you can manipulate the feet. You can lift the outside claw or lift the inside claw, depending on how you have the flap. Look, they're level, totally level. Also, by the way, obviously the cows here have really good feet. We haven't trimmed her yet, remember? And her feet are fantastic. But look, so if we drop that flap, this inside claw is now sitting higher than the outside claw. Lift the flap back up and they level up. Look, again, there's a bit of movement there. Pull the flap out, no movement. You can switch it over easily. You see, all these little things add up to a very big difference. Plus, look how quickly we can trim this cow's foot. You see, normally, I'll trim nice and slowly so that you guys can keep up. But when we're not trimming like that, that is her done on that foot. done on that foot. You see, very little time at all. This is routine trimming and because of KVK, it's nice, easy and straightforward. Anyway, we're going to finish off this cow's feet and get on to that cow that I was talking about earlier on because she is back there and she's still lame, clearly, because we haven't trimmed her yet. When it comes to this farm, what you see is what you get and what you get are fantastic cow's feet. This hasn't just happened. It's not an accident. This is the result of 10 years worth of routine cattle hoof trimming. And any cow here, 
that becomes lame or uncomfortable in any way is seen as soon as we possibly can. And that makes all the difference. You see, it's literally a matter of seconds. Yes, there was a bit more overgrowth on that and we didn't use the knife, but we don't need to. That was a beautiful trim. Let's rewind it and I'll talk through it actually. You see, now it's in the air, we're gonna slow it right down so that you can, yeah. Not me, the trim. So now you can see the foot is in the air. That inside claw is overgrown. Only by about 10 millimeters, which isn't very much, but it is putting excess weight on the inside claw. And that's why that bruise is starting to appear in the typical ulcer site, which is the part we're modeling out right now with the edge of the grinder. We don't need to use the knife because we've eliminated the problem of the bruising by trimming down that inside claw to be the same height as the outside claw and we don't need to overly excessive front feet because cows are less likely to go lame on their front feet and this is a substantial model anyway, just with the grinder alone. Anyway, now that foot's back on the ground, let's trim the last one and get on to that lame cow. When we were younger, we were never running out of time As long as we had each other, everything was black and white This time there's a slightly more substantial bruise on it, so we're going to use the knife just to really deepen that model. That is enough. And just to be sure, look, here's a little 360 of this foot. Now I'm not going to turn it again, and that is, that would be it done without the camera here or with the camera here. That is it done. Look at this though, it's beautiful. If you look from this angle, you can see how deep that model is. We haven't touched this outside claw because we don't need to. It wasn't overgrown, the inside one was. So if we take anything off the outside claw, we need to take even more off the inside claw to balance it up. Right, that's her, done. So here she is. Kevin's just about to bring her into the crush. And let's have a little look at how she's walking just now. So as you can see, she's really hurting on that back right foot, which clearly isn't good. But hopefully there's something we can do about it. I say hopefully because you literally never know. As you can see, cows are inquisitive creatures. So they love to look over the wall of what we are doing. They're probably glad they're not part of it to be fair. Right, I'm starting to worry folks. These guys are sitting going, macho, macho man. I want to be a macho man. Yes, folks, that's right. He never will be. <laughs> or at least I make myself laugh. And with that rather awkward moment out of the way, it's time to get her into the crush, get her foot in the air, so that we can see what we're dealing with. And hopefully, it's something not too complicated. Okay, so as Craig lifts her other foot, looking at this foot, it's clear to see that it's not been that long since she's been trimmed. Which kind of confuses me. As you can see, the trim looks fine, but she does look like she's got a few problems in the white line area of her foot. You see, sometimes we won't pick up problems. If cows are in with the rest of the herd and they're shuffling around and being pushed down a race, it's kind of an unnatural situation. This cow might have been lame the last time we saw her. And maybe we missed it. But maybe, just maybe, she's banged her foot since then. That's caused a bruise in behind the wall horn. That, in turn, has caused an abscess, and that, in turn, has caused lameness, which I think is more likely the case. No matter who you are in the world of hoof trimming, the reality is that whatever is wrong with the cow, or whatever you're saying is wrong with the cow, is your best guess. We can never be 100% certain that what we're saying is absolutely correct. We rely on factual knowledge that's been gained by research done in universities and farms right across the world. So clearly this is an area of concern. This bruising is very typical to find here. First off, we need to deepen the model on both claws and then we'll investigate that bruising further. As we can all see, 
This hoof horn is extremely tough to cut through with my razor sharp knife. And that's a good sign. Hoof horn like this is healthy and it means it can withstand a lot of punishment. Okay, now some of you guys will be looking at this thinking, well, there's obviously the problem there. But that's natural shedding I've spoken about it before and it's probably a month and a half since this cow's been trimmed, so six weeks. And that is completely typical of what you would see the sole beginning to shed away, which is completely natural. This is clearly the issue. Oh. Remember I was talking about she's maybe had a bruise behind the wall horn? That bruise has turned into an abscess and a cavity and caused lameness? Well, what do you know? We have pus. I think this is only going to be a very small problem. But small problems like this can cause considerable pain. It's like having a piece of gravel stuck in your shoe. Which actually makes me think. What is the worst thing that you've ever stood on? I stood on a rusty nail when I was around 10 or 11 years old and it actually came all the way through my foot and out the other side. Yup, it hurt. I really don't want to freak anybody out, but sometimes when I'm concentrating so hard, you'll hear me almost holding my breath because I don't want to go any further than I absolutely must. And as you can see here, we're really starting to get somewhere. That is pressure relief right there. See the problem right there, the tip of my blade? We need to chase or follow that hole up inside of the hoof wall. You see, you have the hoof wall here, where it goes a little bit whiter, then you have solar horn here, and inside this we have the cow's foot. This is tracking up between the wall horn and the interior of her foot, which is why I know I can keep following it. I also know, though, if I go too far, we'll strike crimson gold, which is a bad thing. Look at this. This is really interesting. Look at the bubble where the fistula is. The fistula is where the pus is exiting. See how it's coming and then it's disappearing and coming and disappearing? Believe it or not, that bubble appearing and disappearing is all down to the cow's heartbeat. As she beats her heart, blood pumps around her body and increases the pressure, which forces the bubble out of that hole. Told you it was cool. See, I'm using the hook of the knife to dish it out so that I don't need to take any more solar horn than I absolutely must. In case you're wondering, she's mooing because she's in stress. She's somewhere she doesn't want to be. And after all, I'm footering around with something that's already causing her pain. But we're doing it as quickly as we possibly can. Because this paddle is putting pressure on her foot, I'm actually going to drop it and see if anything else comes out of this hole. Nope, not a sausage. Let's back up. Because we're going to use a block, I'm going to reduce the height of the whole solar horn. She doesn't need it because we're going to put all of the weight onto that inside claw. So we might as well ensure all of her weight is off the outside one. So when we first picked up this foot, we reduced it so that both claws were balanced. Now we're unbalancing them to take the weight off the outside one. And by the power of magic, on goes a block. So you can clearly see where the little problem has been. And like I said, it's not too bad at all. A simple block and a quick fix, and this will be totally healed. She'll actually walk better straight away, to be honest. Now, as to the cause, we can't be sure of the cause. Sometimes when we trim cow's feet back to where they should be, if they've had an awful lot of overgrowth before, as she may have, then when it comes to corners or anything like that, her feet aren't maybe prepared for it, and it can affect them adversely. So that could have happened. She could have had 
an accident of some sort and smacked it off a bit of metal or a bit of concrete more likely when she's been fighting with another cow. We don't know. What we do know is, that is it fixed. And that little bit of iodine will make it heal up nicely. Although the cows are as relaxed as we can get them, they're still in unfamiliar surroundings, which is why you can see her frothing at the mouth. That's a sign of stress. It's not one that we like, it's not a sign that we like, I mean, but it's the reality of a cow being separated from her herd mates. I'd love a pet cow. Right, block should be dry. I've got the saliva off my chin from her. Let's see how she walks. She's clearly still sore on it, but that's not the type of issue that we'll see again. We won't need to see her again. She will be completely healed, but obviously we've been messing around with a foot that was already sore. Anyway, that is her dealt with. We're gonna get packed up and we're gonna get over to farm number dos. That's two. Sometimes you just feel like you've forgotten something. No, I don't like to. I swear we've forgotten something. It's probably something not very important. What are you that boy is always messing around. So this is cow 2500's farm. And as you can see, it's an extremely clean and well kept place. The cows are really well looked after. But to say we're struggling with cow 2500 would be a serious understatement. First though, before we get to her, we need to trim these girls. And luckily for us and the herd of cows here, there's very little wrong with the herd of cows here. 2500 is what you call an anomaly. Something bad has happened an accident or something. And we and the farmer have been and are doing everything we possibly can to get her on the road to recovery. Anyway, let's get these girls trimmed, get a coffee and get 2,500 up the race. I must point out by the way, we didn't wash the crush or the equipment at the last farm because these two farms, i.e. the first one, where there was pretty much nothing wrong with all those cows and this farm are owned by the same people. They're just a few hundred meters apart. So cross-contamination isn't an issue because they run kind of as one whole lot. So us cleaning down the crush would be of no real benefit. Just like that, they're keen as mustard to get in the crush and get a pedicure. Sometimes I wonder if we should paint their nails and put little diamante gems and things on. Mrs. HGP seems to love it, so I'm sure they would too. Hello. Anyway, actually, do you know what? Cows can chill for five minutes. We need a coffee. While Craig's making the coffee though, we don't want to waste any time, so we might as well keep you trimming. Got me
gotta use my witchcraft. So while those guys deal with the cow and the crush that's got a little problem right now, let's have a little chat. In the world, there's a lot of lonely people, a lot of mental health problems and things like that. And I'm not gonna go too deep here, folks. Don't worry, stick with me, don't click off. In fact, click the subscribe button while you're listening to this, because you might as well. Done it? No, seriously, just, just click the subscribe button. Anyway, yeah, so there's this um, movement of people trying to let everybody know that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to need to talk. So there's a Christmas single that I'm gonna be a part of today and we're filming it later on actually. I'll take you guys with me to see behind the scenes, although maybe put some cotton buds in your ears while I actually sing. Those guys won't be there, but they will help me set the crush up and everything. And the, the whole idea behind it is people in the world are lonely. If there are people you know who are isolated, reach out to them. Just say hello, stop in for a coffee. It doesn't need to be anything dramatic. You don't even need to say you're there because you thought they were lonely. Just stop in for a coffee. You've no idea the difference it might make to somebody. I know I've had times in my life when people have stopped in to say hello or actually somebody phoned, believe it or not, somebody phoned me and that phone call saved my life. Crazy story, crazy, crazy story. It's in the book that you'll all get to read eventually. Yeah, anyway, I'm gonna drink my coffee, I'm gonna watch Kevin fix that cow's foot and I'm gonna think about how I'm gonna sing Silent Night later on in front of a camera and a cow and a crush and people. <laughs> Scary thought. Kevin hasn't gone away for hoof trimming training, but he has trimmed cow's feet for years and years and years and previously attended a small course. Now that he's back and hopefully his back is better, we should be able to get him sent away on a proper course. Although obviously he's constantly been trained by myself and overlooked or overseen or oversawn or yeah, we're watching him constantly, which is why you just saw me nip over there to advise on the hoof that he's just trimmed. Look at my little um, band of brothers. Which is weird, actually. I didn't mean it like that, but they're both my uh, brother-in-law. You can't choose family. I maybe joke about it a little too often. I would be absolutely lost without these two guys, especially seeing as Craig has been with me for so long now and having Kevin back in the fold is pretty much idyllic. These two aren't just family and they're not just work colleagues. They're friends and partners in crime. Right, we just got her out of the pen, but she ran away from us. She's not doing well though. She's walking really, really well, but it's somewhat of a fallacy. Our blocks are taking all of her weight and that is vastly reducing the pain so that she can walk. But unfortunately, her foot is actually getting worse. You can see she's got a little bit leaner and her foot has really swollen up. Anyway, we'll finish trimming the cows that we're trimming right now and then we'll get her in the crush, which is pretty much now. Just like that, she's right behind me in the race, straight away, ready to go. This isn't good. Okay, so this is her in the crush. We did this really quickly, as in we looked at her foot really quickly, and now I'm talking about it once she's actually back in the pen because we don't want her to be in the crush for too long. Her foot is not going to heal. Well, actually, no, that's wrong. Her foot has completely healed. The hoof itself has healed. If you look at me prodding and poking at it, the hoof itself is fine. Her foot isn't sore, but she now has a serious infection raging in her ankle. And it's something the farmer, the dairyman, and certainly not me, can get on top of. She has had every medication under the sun, every painkiller possible, and she's been living in a straw pen for the last month or so. Yet, it's just getting worse. And the reality is that even now, if this foot completely healed, the bone is so big and callousated inside that she'll just go lame again. She'll just be in pain again. And if you look at her walk here, as we're putting her into the crush before we even had her in the crush, you can see she's walking well on those blocks. She is comfortable, or, or at least as comfortable 
as she possibly can be. So I'll be honest, I get asked this question a lot. Are there any cows that we can't heal? Yes, the answer is yes. Cow 2500, unfortunately, is one of those cows. But she's at the point where her hoof has completely healed, so we've done that, we've managed to do that. But we can't do anything about her ankle, and the best thing for Cow2500 is now to leave the farm. If we were to continue treating it and treating it and treating it, she's just going to be in pain in between those visits. And that's not something I want, it's not something the farmer wants or anybody wants. So now that she is walking well on those blocks, it's time for her to take the last bus out of here. And that will be the end for Cow2500. For me, it's partially a result. She is more comfortable than when we first saw her. We healed the hoof, but that infection is up in her ankle. So, it's a sad story. Yeah, it's a sad story. Not all things end well. I don't really know what to say now, I'll be honest. Onwards and upwards, that's that. We need to get cleaned up and we need to move onwards to a bit of a singing contest. Well, it's not a contest. If it was, there's no way I would enter. Right, we're gonna get the crush cleaned up and then we'll see you at farm number three. So we are headed to one of my good friend's farms to do this kind of singly singy thing that I won't be very good at at all. Just because we thought it would be better to do it in a farm setting. So we're gonna borrow one of his cows and uh, we'll give him it back, don't worry, we will give him it back. But we're gonna borrow one of his cows and maybe dress the crush up a little bit and probably even dress myself up a little bit because to be honest right now, not looking the best. Okay, so the boys are away home. We've actually fast forwarded. It's 3 p.m. right now. The sun is starting to go down. We've already got the crush set up. And as you can see, I'm wearing a Christmas jumper. We're singing a re-rendition of Silent Night. Um, it's gonna be called uh, Lonely Night to sort of signify obviously that so many people around the world and around Scotland are lonely at this time of year. Um, I am seriously nervous about this because I do not have a fantastic singing voice. Probably like you. I love singing, in my head I sound good, but really I, I know I don't sound very good at singing at all, so yeah. so. The crush is all set up. We have some sparkly lights on the crush, looking beautiful. We have a beautiful black cow ready to go in the crush, hopefully. Uh, yeah, I just need to get there and meet Graham, who is the videographer who is putting this whole thing together. <sighs> Wish me luck. At least we've got an absolutely stunning night for it, so we've managed to set up outside. <laughs> I'm sounding a little bit stuttery because I've been driving here singing uh, my part as we go along. Eek. So anyway, we better get the cow in. Graham, the guy, the videographer who's doing this, isn't actually here yet. So yeah, he should be here soon. Hopefully. Let's hope the cow goes in nice and easily. She was fairly well behaved. I mean, as well as can be expected. So Graham, the videographer's just turned up and look what he's handed me. <laughs> How good is that? It actually kind of looks like a reindeer as well. Nice. I'm currently trying to decide between no hat and silly hair or silly hat and no silly hair. No, don't know. <laughs> he, for he forgot to put the volume off in the earpieces. <laughs> Fine, we figured it out. And we've still got some lights, so we're good. Silent night, lonely night. It's a bit, a bit dodgy. <laughs>
And that, folks, was the end of a very long, very productive and enjoyable day. Thank you very much for watching The Hoof GP. For all your likes, comments, subscribes and messages, I really do appreciate every single one. Thank you. Catch you next time on The Hoof GP. I'd just like to point out, by the way, Craig, we're in, we're between farms right now and Craig did not sit on the trailer for the whole way. <laughs> I was right about the unimportant bit though, obviously. No offence, Craig. Offence taken. <laughs> Kids, don't do that at home.